This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Wednesday called on business leaders gathered at the World Economic Forum in Davos to follow the principles outlined by an expert group to make credible, accountable, net zero pledges. The United Nations and the International Organization for Standardization launched the guidelines in November to help organizations come up with solid plans. The green energy transition of world powers has been one of the central themes at the forum in Davos. Here's Secretary General Guterres. Our world is plagued by a perfect storm on a number of fronts. Start with the short term, a global economic crisis. The outlook, as we all know, is bleak. Many parts of the world face recession, and the entire world faces a slowdown. A helicopter crash Wednesday outside of the Ukrainian capital killed at least 15 people, including the Ukrainian interior minister. Officials said the crash happened in a suburb east of Kiev. Nine of the dead were on board the helicopter when it went down. It wasn't immediately clear what caused the crash. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said at least 15 people had died. Though the exact number of casualties was still being determined, he said at that point the dead included at least three children. Microsoft says it plans to lay off 10,000 employees as part of a restructuring plan meant to brace the company for an economic downturn. The tech giant is the latest company to cut workers. Meta and Salesforce have also announced cuts recently. The layoffs at Microsoft amount to less than 5 percent of its workforce. From Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sat down with her Chinese counterpart in Switzerland Wednesday. BOA's Tommy McNeil has details. It is the highest ranking contact between the two countries since the presidents agreed to look for ways to ease strained relations. Yellen's first face-to-face meeting with Vice Premier Liu He comes as the U.S. and Chinese economies grapple with differing but intertwined challenges on trade, technology, and more. The Chinese economy is reopening after a COVID-19 resurgence killed tens of thousands of people and shuttered countless businesses. The U.S. is slowly recovering from 40-year high inflation and is on track to hit its statutory debt ceiling. Tommy McNeil, VOA News, Washington. A Texas man accused of a racist massacre at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, won't face the death penalty in federal court. AP correspondent Norman Hall. Federal prosecutors will not seek the death penalty for Patrick Crucius for the 2019 attack that left 23 people dead and dozens wounded. Crucius, who's from the Dallas area, is accused of traveling to West Texas to target Mexicans. Prosecutors did not explain in their court filing why they won't seek the death penalty for Crucius, although he could still face execution if convicted in state court. The decision not to pursue the death penalty in the case could be a defining moment for the Justice Department. It has sent mixed signals about capital punishment. During his campaign, President Joe Biden pledged to abolish the death penalty. I, Norman Hall. A joint study by the United Nations and Somalia's health ministry says people in Somalia are highly traumatized due to political instability, prolonged violence, and humanitarian crises. The study found that mental disorder is prevalent across the country. It said about the cases are about 77 percent higher than a previous study by the World Health Organization. That study had suggested nearly 40 percent of the population of Somalia had a mental or psychological disorder. The study further said that the prevalence of mental disorders among the young is significantly higher than previously reported. Philippine journalist and Nobel Peace Laureate Maria Ressa was acquitted Wednesday of tax evasion charges that she and her other critics say were part of an attempt by former President Rodrigo Duterte to stifle freedom of the press. The Court of Tax Appeals ruled that prosecutors failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Ressa and the parent company of her news site, Rappler, had failed to pay taxes on an investment made by U.S.-based Omidyar Network. Omidyar is a philanthropic investment firm founded by the founder of the online shopping site eBay. From Washington, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News. Please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you.
Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm an American. I grew up in the U.S. I am a professional English language educator with extensive experience in teaching English, especially English for academic purposes, test preparation, and general English to university students and adults of all levels from A1 to C2.